John Comfer. Uh, I'm uh, a British-based director, writer of Ghanaian descent. Cinema for me is, is the promise of possibility, the promise of uh, potentiality, uh, the promise of uh, uh, the, 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 the ability to have uh, in motion an index, an indexical machine that can be a recorder of time and emotion. That for me is first and foremost what it is. And the reason why it was important for us at a certain moment was because it held out that promise of possibility. Uh, uh, the cinema became uh, the custodian, I think in Africa, of a certain kind of approach to the image, a certain kind of approach to African potential, African possibilities. And that's why it was so powerful. That's why it was so important. I mean, over and above anything else, this was what it was supposed to do. <laughs> Some Ben talked about decolonizing our image and so on, and people, I think, assumed that he meant that something had to happen to the image itself. No, what 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 had to happen was that the cinema opened the avenues through which these possibilities would appear. I think I think there was at a certain moment. Uh, something one could definitely call an African cinema. And that project was allied to the process of discovering new identities, new subjectivities, and a new role for the African subject. So there was definitely a, a, a space, a moment, when that was clear. Uh, whether it's Nkrumah saying we need this kind of structure, or Sam Den saying we need this kind of narrative, or, you know, uh, Paul Vera saying we need this kind of approach. You know, there was a moment. The, what we have at the moment, it seems to me, um, is that we, we, are, we are in a space in which what you're getting are overlapping utopias or overlapping promises for what the image can be. That the majority of our countries are post-cinematic spaces in which the institutions of cinema died, quite literally. This is not some theoretical European <laughs> thing. It died. The structures, the policies, the monies, the filmmakers, the training, the pedagogy, all went. So when the cinema now comes back, and it is coming back in several of these spaces, it has to coexist as a utopian form with other forms. Uh, it is not anymore the preeminent form. That is the reality now. We have to be realistic here. The fact is that through these avenues, video, digital, DVD, the majority of people here on this continent are getting access to their image. That is the reality. Whatever we think about that is another question, but that's how they get in the image. If you subject Nollywood or Ghana films or new Kenyan films to the scrutinies, the exacting scrutinies, measurements of cinema, there is failure. But if you turn the, the table around and you say, what is really the cinema for? And if the answer to that is, it is to provide images of a culture to itself, then these so-called inferior formats are succeeding, particularly at the points where the cinema <laughs> failed. <laughs> and it is not good enough anymore to endlessly talk about African cinema anymore. It is not good enough to talk about the image in Africa always in the language of emergency or crisis. Because to be honest with you, there are places where there is no crisis. You know, if you go to urban uh, Lagos or urban Accra, these people don't feel they're missing images of themselves. I arrived like many people of my generation uh, at the point of considering the cinema precisely at the same point when we were trying to figure out how to be citizens, how to argue for the legitimacy of our lives with a certain European state which was hostile, indifferent to who we were. The process of discovering the legitimacy 
of narrative, the importance of um, representation, was at the same time as you discover that the best means by which one does that is via the index machine, the, the preeminent indexical machine, the camera. So a lot of us drifted towards it.